All right, today we're going to be talking about short field takeoffs in Flight Simulator 2020. A short field takeoff is any time you have a runway that's considered short for the airplane that you're flying. It basically means that you don't have uh, as much runway as you would normally have for your takeoff roll. There could also be an obstruction at the end of the runway that you need to avoid. It could be a small tree or a big tree uh, or a small building. Usually you don't see very tall buildings or large obstacles at the ends of runways exactly for this reason so that you can avoid them as easily as possible but it does sometimes happen especially when you're flying uh, more in backcountry areas landing in small airstrips oftentimes those aren't as well maintained as a big airport would be so you need to be able to handle that short field and avoid any obstacles when you're taking off. As usual, I'll be doing the demonstration in the Cub, but the concepts that we're going to learn apply just as well to a Cub, a Cessna, a small turboprop, or even a big jet. The only thing that's going to change is going to be the distances and the speeds that you need to calculate to know how to do your short field takeoff. All right, so there are a few considerations you need to take before doing a takeoff at a given runway. So the most important one, obviously, is runway length. If your runway is too short for the airplane that you're flying, obviously you can take off there. You won't be able to take off in a 747 at a small 500-foot backcountry runway, but you potentially can take off in a Cub at that, at that strip. Uh, so you'll have to look up what the minimum length takeoff is for your aircraft and use that as your first uh, decision point to decide if you can take off at that runway. After that, the surface of the runway can also uh, affect your takeoff. If you're taking off from an asphalt surface, then it probably won't be an issue. If you're flying out of a grass field, a grass field will actually, you'll need a little bit more runway than you would if it were an asphalt or a concrete field, uh, because obviously you have less traction, which means you aren't going to get up to speed as quick, so you won't be able to get up in the air as quick. And finally, you also have to consider the slope of the runway. This isn't a huge factor. I mean, there are some airports in Flight Sim 2020 that are at a slope, and you do need to take that into consideration. But for the most part, you don't really need to worry about it too much for now. Uh, the other thing you have to consider for your takeoff, obviously, is obstacles. If there's a large obstacle at the end of the runway, obviously, you're going to want to do that short field takeoff uh, procedure, which we're going to look at in a second. The next factor to take into consideration is the winds and temperature. As we've learned in previous videos, the wind can affect the actual ground speed of our plane. And because of that, we need to keep it, take it into account when doing a takeoff and always take off into the wind to make sure to use the minimum amount of runway as possible. And the final factor you need to take into account is the elevation of the airfield. The higher you are, the more runway you're going to need to take off. We won't look in detail at exactly how much more you're going to need, but suffice it to say that you're going to want to add a little bit of extra runway the higher up you go in terms of your takeoffs. So in real life, there are calculations you would have to do to be able to make sure that you can safely take off on the runway length at the weight of your airplane, at the altitude that you're at, and the current winds and temperature. But luckily, we're in a game, so we don't have to worry about that too much. We will have a look at what you do need to take into account when you're doing a short field takeoff, mostly for backcountry runways, like I've been saying, because they're much smaller and they often have obstacles either uh, at takeoff or at landing. So when you're doing a takeoff from a runway, there are two different angles at which you can climb in your airplane. The first one, which is the one you do most of the time, is a speed that's called VY, which is giving you the best rate of climb. The best rate of climb means it's going to give you the greatest altitude gain in the shortest amount of time. And that's the green line that you're seeing on the graphic in front of you right now. The other speed that you can fly at is VX, which is the red line that you're seeing there, and that's the best angle of climb. This is the speed you're going to use when you're doing a short field takeoff because it's going to give you the greatest altitude gain in the shortest distance traveled. And obviously, if there's an obstacle at the end of the runway or you're on a short runway and there's an obstacle, then obviously you're going to want to avoid those obstacles and VX is going to give you that option by getting you as high as possible, as 
quickly as possible. All right, so that's all the theory we need to know right now. We're going to jump into the cockpit at this point. So we are at a different airport today, and the reason for that is so that we can practice our short field takeoffs and have obstacles. As you can see, there are some trees right there, which make it much more realistic in terms of an obstruction at the end of the runway. So we are going to do two separate takeoffs. The one we are going to do right now is going to be without obstructions, but we will use a short field procedure. The runway is a little bit longer than we actually need, but we'll use that short field procedure so that we can get used to it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run through all the different considerations and just make sure that everything makes sense for our takeoff. So first of all, in terms of runway surface, we are on a hard surface, which is perfect for our takeoff. If we were taking off from a grass field, we would have to slightly modify our takeoff procedure, and we'll look at that in a separate video. In terms of runway length, again, like I said, we have enough runway, but we will pretend it is a short field so that we can practice that procedure. In terms of obstacles for this first takeoff, there are none. So we'll be able to do our takeoff at the recommended VY speed, which will give us, which will get us to our cruise altitude as quickly as possible. In terms of the winds and temperatures, everything is uh, calm today, so we don't have to worry about the wind or the temperature. In terms of our elevation, we are at 720 feet, so it's not really a factor either. And there is not much of a slope to the runway, so we are pretty much good to go. So I'll just walk through the procedure again, and then we'll do the takeoff together, just because things start happening fairly quickly, and it's hard to describe everything as it's happening. So the first thing is we are going to hold the brakes down and apply full power. And once the engine has reached a sufficient uh, power output, we will let go of the brakes, which will get us moving down the runway much quicker than it would if we were to just slowly accelerate from uh, a standstill. We'll also need to have the flaps in the first position for this takeoff since it's a short field. That's the recommended setting for the Cub. Again, this will depend on the plane you're flying. You'll have to look into the manual for that plane to figure out what you need in terms of configuration for your short field takeoff. Then what we're going to do is just as usual, we are going to rotate at around 40 knots, which is around 75 kilometers an hour. And at which point we are going to pitch the plane to around uh, 112 kilometers an hour to get that optimal cruise speed. And that's pretty much all there is to it. All right, so we are pretty much ready to go. I will apply the brakes. I'll apply power. Release the brakes. So I'm keeping an eye on the airspeed. There we go. We are airborne. And we want to let the plane accelerate to about 112. I'm retracting the flaps now, and as you can see, we accelerated quickly once that happened. And I am just going to hold that 112 kilometer an hour climb to give us our best climb speed to our cruise altitude for this flight. And that's pretty much all there is to it for the short field takeoff when there are no obstructions. So what we'll do now is we'll just reset the flight and we will try it again with obstructions. Okay, so we are back on the runway for our second takeoff, this time with the obstruction at the end of the runway. You can just make out the trees over there. So in terms of runway surface, it's exactly the same as before since we're at the same runway, so we don't have to worry about that one. Runway length is fine, but we will again assume it's a short field takeoff so we can practice that procedure. There is an obstacle at the end of the runway, which means we're going to have to climb out at VX rather than VY, which means a slower speed, but it means it'll give us the best angle of climb, which means it'll give us the best chance of avoiding that obstruction at the end of the runway. So the procedure will be exactly like last time. Flaps in the first position, apply full power, rotate at 40 knots, let the airspeed build up to 104 kilometers an hour, and hold that airspeed until we've cleared any obstacles by at least 100 feet. Once that's done, we can then lower the pitch of the plane and continue accelerating and climbing to our cruise altitude at around 112 kilometers an hour, which gives us the optimal rate of climb, which we saw in the previous takeoff. All right, all that said, we're pretty much ready to go. Brake is on, applying power. 
Letting go of the brake. Plane starts moving fairly quickly. Tail comes up quickly as well. There's our 40. We can rotate. And there's 104, which is what we want to hold. So I'm just adjusting my pitch to hold 104, which isn't always super easy. And there we go. We've now cleared any obstacles that were below us. And that is all there is to it. So again, I hope you learned something useful in this flight. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you again next time.